it's Larry Lurcy, and today's video is just a quick video on sh some shortcuts in Photoshop. I know I'm really bad about not using Photoshop uh, shortcuts, and there's so many ones you can use. Uh, the problem is just trying to remember them all. And so I just wanted to go over a few real quick that um, I think are really handy, and you might just want to jot them down and put them on a sticky note on your monitor, and maybe it'll remind you to use them. Um, some of these you may know about, some of them you may not. Um, couple of ones really quick first on the brushes. Um, I know a lot of people will go through when they're uh, when they're working on a brush uh, like this and they want to change the uh, size and they'll just go here and adjust it and look at it until they get the size they want which is just takes forever to do and what you can do is actually use the bracket keys to size up your brush like that make it bigger or smaller. It's a really fast way when you're uh, working on a, a layer mask or something and you have to use a brush it's a really fast way to change that brush size just using those bracket keys okay so that's uh, that's the first thing now uh, one little thing that'll come up and this isn't really a shortcut but it's something that can drive you nuts is um, this cursor sometimes you will notice that it switches to this little um, I guess bullseye or whatever you call it uh, crosshairs and uh, you'll go around you'll figure out why can't I see my brush and it happens to everybody and what usually happens is you accidentally hit your cap lock key when you hit the cap lock key you get the brush thing back but if you accidentally hit it maybe you're trying to hit shift or tab or something you hit that cap lock and then you can change your brush size but uh, you can't see the little brush circles and it drives you crazy so cap lock is what turns that off and on so just make a note of that when you see those crosshairs, that's what that means. Um, one other little incidental thing that, that's really handy is let's say you're gonna, using a bunch of shape brushes uh, like this. Get that down a little smaller using the bracket keys. Um, one of the things you can do is use the, um, the, little, uh, the brackets, I'm not sure what you call these, the greater than, less than brackets down at the bottom of the keyboard, uh, the one that are above the, uh, the period and the comma. Uh, and it will actually scroll through the different brushes for you that way. So it's an easy way. If you know you need an arrow and you don't know uh, which size to do, you can just kind of move through those and find the, find the brush size that you want. So that's a good way of going through your brushes. Um, for example, maybe even if you're up here and you've got um, a hard brush right next to a soft brush and you want to switch back and forth, then um, you know, you've got your... Uh, hard brush right there, you hit the little uh, back key there, and now it's soft. So you're just switching between those two brushes that are right next to each other. So uh, it's a really easy way to switch brushes, especially if you have the brushes you use sitting right next to each other. So that, that's just a few handy ones to use with brushes. Now let's look at a, a, a couple that, that involve layers. Um, let me get my layers palette over here so you can see what we're doing. Let me turn off this top layer. Let's say you're putting together something like this and you've got a few different layers here and um, you've got one here that you don't like that this layer here is, in, is behind this layer where that knee is blocking him. Uh, if you've got this layer selected right here, uh, one of the things you can do is hold down the command or the control on the PC, command key, bracket, and if you will notice here on the right, that layer is going to move up and down within the uh, the palette here. So, um, and if you watch here why I'm doing it, right now it's behind the leg, now it's in front of the leg, and uh, now it's in front of that one. So you can move a layer around. A lot of times when you're compositing, you've got a whole bunch of different layers, and you're like, well, I need to move this one back, or I need to move this one forward. You can just touch on that layer, and then use the command bracket to uh, move it wherever you want. I like that. So that one's really handy. To use. A um, couple more things that uh, will happen sometimes is, for example, if you're going to change the opacity on a layer. So uh, let's say this this guy right here, we want to change the opacity on him. Uh, what typically would do is you click here, grab that slider, move it to wherever you want. But an even easier way is just to click right on that word opacity and you can immediately slide left and right and change the opacity without having to go in and do a second click. Same thing with the fill. You can change it that way. So a lot of these ones where it's got the word out to the side there, you can go in and just click on it 
and adjust the opacity just by sliding back and forth with the mouse or with the stylus. So that's a really quick uh, time saver as well. And then um, two more quick ones. Let's say you want to combine all these layers into one layer, but you want to keep all the existing layers underneath. Um, sometimes I'll do this if I want to try some sort of an effect and I want to see what it'll look like, um, kind of like I did with that. Let's just trash that one. But let's say I want to combine all of these into one where I can try some effects on it, but I still have all my individual layers underneath in case I want to come back to them. Um, in that case, what you can do is uh, by doing Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E on the PC. Command Option Shift E. And it's made us a layer that combines all the ones below, but we still have them below. So we could try a topaz filter or whatever we want to do with this top one. And uh, then we're keeping all our other ones intact underneath it. So that's a pretty cool one uh, to use as well. And then one last one that is really handy is, let's say you've got a few images that you're working on and... Um, you're doing them one at a time, you're bringing them in from Bridge and working on them like this, you get it all fixed up however you want it, and once you're done with it, you can do Command-Shift-W or Control-Shift-W on the PC. And if you do Command-Shift-W, it will automatically save it. Uh, we're not going to save this one, but you could hit save. And then it jumps you right back into Bridge. So it allows you to finish your work on it, save it, and then go back right into Bridge to get the next um, file. So that's a really uh, good time saver as well. So anyways, that's just some uh, different ones you can try out. Again, there's thousands of them. Um, if you've got a, uh, one that's really handy that you like using all the time, leave it in the comments. Uh, let me know what your favorite one is, especially if it's a, a little known one that, that people don't know about. Uh, leave it in the comments and uh, help everybody else out. So anyways, I hope that helps. Jot those down on the, on the sticky note or piece of paper and put it by your monitor and uh, save yourself a little bit of time down the road. Hope that helps and I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.